good morning from the Atlanta airport. We're here as our layover. Flew in a couple hours ago and we board in like 15, 20 minutes. Our plane's already here. The time has finally come. Let's head to Paris. Once in the air, it was time to start our beverage service, which was completely free. So we started with some red wine as well as some sparkling wine. And then as for our meal, the choice was between chicken or gnocchi. So we got one of each. And honestly, the food here was fairly decent um, for being kind of a TV dinner. Uh, it was very flavorful, came with a side of like a couscous almost, as well as some crackers and cheese and a little like fudge brownie, which was fantastic. It was a fairly long flight, about eight hours or so total. So time to get a little bit of sleep on the flight, but first had to get a little bit of a nightcap. So we got some whiskey for a little nightcap before trying to get an hour or so of sleep. Right around 7 a.m. local time to Paris, they started to serve breakfast on board the flight. So the choice was a chocolate hazelnut calzone or a ham, egg, and cheese calzone. We both opted for the chocolate hazelnut option. And this also came with a side of blueberry yogurt. And then after breakfast, we started our descent into Paris. And it was cool on the descent that we got a quick glimpse of the Eiffel Tower. So in this shot, you can kind of see off of the furthest engine that the Eiffel Tower is sticking up kind of in the center of the screen. But yeah, just a quick little glimpse of it before landing in Paris proper. After we landed, things moved fairly quickly. So we boarded our TGV train, headed to Disneyland Paris. And this was about a nine minute ride from the airport to Disneyland Paris station. So fairly easy. We were a bit confused by the train system, but we managed to make it to Disneyland Paris and then made our way through Disney Village all the way to our resort, which was Newport Bay Club. Okay, so we have made it to Disneyland Paris. Dropped our bags Newport. off. Yes. <sighs> Crazy travel day, running on very little sleep, but finally made it here train was an experience but we'll talk about that later yeah but yeah dropped our bags off at newport bay club so now let's head over to disneyland park And after making our way down Main Street, the first ride of the day was, of course, It's a Small World.
after It's a Small World, it was time to head over to Adventureland to check out the Disneyland Paris version of Pirates of the Caribbean. And this was interesting because the boarding area was similar to the Mexico Pavilion, where it's inside but feels like you are outside. <laughs>
bows, wrestles his candles, villains and knaves, they got me on his own. With devils and blacks, he really meant it, they got me on his own. And after Pirates of the Caribbean, we headed over to our next must-do for the day in Frontierland, and that would be Phantom Manor, which is the Disneyland Paris equivalent for Haunted Mansion. It is a bit different than the ones in the U.S. parks because it is in Frontierland, and it is so close to Big Thunder Mountain Railroad. It is, has a backstory that relates to Big Thunder Mountain Railroad, and it is more of a Western-themed Haunted Mansion. Now, curious souls, come. I have more to show you. Our tour begins here, in this gallery, where you gaze upon the sweet innocence of youth. Kindness in all the way, room forever. There's It appears everyone is doomed at fate. Even you? This chamber has no windows, no doors, which offers you this chilling challenge to find a way out. <laughs> Le fantôme des lieux se fera un plaisir de vous aider.
warlocks and witches answer this call. Your presence is wanted at this ghostly ball. The doors could me or my teens and aunt who valserons en poule. My car is in touch. Join now the spirits in natural doom. Last ride for the day before heading out to Disneyland Paris Park was to check out the Disneyland Paris version of Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. Thank you. 
after Snow White, we headed out of the park to the Hotel New York Art of Marvel Resort to check out some of the larger-than-life statues of some of our favorite Avengers, so Black Panther, Iron Man, and Captain Marvel. Also enjoyed a lovely view of our hotel from across the lake. And inside the resort, there's some cool things to look at as well, including some Iron Man suits, a larger-than-life comic book that you can pose in, and then a Women of Marvel kind of art gallery, which is very cool to see all the different kind of pop art-esque paintings of various women superheroes in the Marvel Universe. Then we head over to dinner at the downtown restaurant, and this restaurant is themed to New York, but specifically in Marvel. So it is described in the Disneyland Paris app as swing between the Chinese, American, and Italian cuisine stations like Spider-Man through the New York rooftops on this cosmopolitan culinary journey. So themed to New York in the sense of American food, Little Italy, and Chinatown. And while the food was good, the desserts here were surely the star, and so cute, themed to different Marvel characters. There was a Groot pot, Thor's hammer, and then a beautiful tower of macarons. Bonsoir, everybody. We have completed our lovely day in Disneyland Paris and had a lovely meal at the downtown restaurant at the Marvel Resort, the Hotel New York. Um, but now we are finally checked into our resort, so we're staying at Newport Bay Club this trip. And yeah, we have a, a one king room. We're in the corner. Yep, corner room. So, bonus windows. Indeed. And surprise, no AC. Yeah, I don't really know what's happening with that. I thought I thought the room had AC, but seems to not want to work. So, windows are open. We almost let a bee in. Yeah. So, Europe! Yes. We're fun, being immersed! Fun stuff. So, we'll show you where we're sleeping. Yes. So, on with the room tour. So, we are staying in room... 2174, which is in the west wing of Newport Bay Club. And even though we're supposed to stay out of the west wing. Mm -hmm. But I'm with the room door. So with my back to the front door, immediately on our right, we have a mirror to check out your outfit in the mornings. Full length mirror, always nice. And there is the light switch that turns this light on right next to the door. Yes. I will say this mirror looks like it has seen some better days. Yes. And then there's a connecting door, which was unlocked when we got in. And slightly ajar. So, but didn't make any new friends yet. No, not yet. But continuing on into the main room, we have our bags here for now, but we will put them away at some point. Somewhere. Yes, not sure where yet. But the room is actually fairly dark. Well. There's a light over here. Okay. We're still learning. We are still learning. But like that corner is very dark, it, it seems. Is. But we do have two windows on either side of a TV with some drawers. I assume next to the TV is fake drawers. Aww. Probably. They don't want me to pull them out. Yeah. There is space to put things here, though. True. And there is an outlet right next to the TV as well, which is a European outlet. Surprise! Oh, and we have a surprise little cabinet on the side. So, but I don't think this has... So the top does not, but the side gives you a little bit of extra something-something, as well as your typical drawers. Is this side? Doesn't look like it. That one has a little... Like so it's literally notch. Just the one side. And then your door. Oh, hello. Do you want laundry service, I think? Oh, okay. Good to know. We don't, but you know. <laughs> yes, we, we will you not do. be requiring any laundry service. And then turning to my right here, next to our other window, we have kind of like the desk area, slash, like coffee and tea station. So, a vanity area. Yes, vanity area. It's like a vanity area. area to put on your hair, or do your hair, or your makeup. With some more outlets. Not really sure what's... What all those are, actually. This one looks like the hair dryer outlet on the cruise. I think that one's the European outlet. Well, there you go, Europe. But I don't know what the other two are. So... We'll figure, we'll figure that out. out. 
And then the coffee selection, we have a few coffees. We don't know if this is part of it though. Yeah, not really sure if it's included or not. Because there's the waters over here that kind of scare us. Like, are those free? I'm not really sure. Probably not, because, spoiler alert, at dinner it wasn't. Yeah. Yeah. So, and there's an ice bucket. There's no ice machine on this floor. They said they're on floors one and three, and I would assume just the odd floors. But we will have to check that out, check that out at some point. And then for our king bed, I do think this is really cute and very... Mm -hmm. Kind of Yacht Club-esque with the sailing motif happening here for the Newport Bay Club. It's also a nice little border on the around the whole room with a little Mickey there and a pelican over here and Pluto. But yeah, it's, it actually is a very large bed. This is a king bed. Um, I don't think it was supposed to be a king bed. It said a large double bed. So, not upset that it's a king bed, but yeah. And there is another uh, European outlet on that side. I don't think there's one on this side no. of the bed, but that is where the phone is attached to as well. And your thermostat is right there that only sh shows heat. No air conditioning. And then, Hannah is displaying, modeling the... I'm calling it the princess poof. It's a very oversized chair. But it's like, it's like foam. And oh. Of course, no sides on it. Because I was like, does it fold out? And it's like, no, there's no room for it to fold out. Well, does it fold out? I'm not going to mess with it. We don't know what it is. It's a poof. We might experiment with it another time. But yeah. for now, it's just, it's here. By the trash can. Yeah. And then our view is not the greatest. Oh, the windows have no screens. Oh, yes, that's also true. Windows have no screens. We have the windows open right now because there's well, no air. Not this one because this one scares me because it just goes, baby. Yes. The other ones kind of tilt right. into the room. And that's what I had seen in other rooms. I hadn't seen one like this that just straight up swung. Right. With this, you could like, a kid could fall out. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Gotta watch them like a hawk in the king bedroom, all your children. This is true. But that is our view from that window. And then our view from our other window is very similar. So luckily we did not get a parking lot view. But we didn't pay extra for the view. No. We weren't expecting anything spectacular. So yeah, that kind of completes the tour of our did you show them the bathroom? Oh, I didn't show them the bathroom. I, we are running on very little sleep. Come on. So behind the nautical curtain is the bathroom area. So we have the sink area here with some storage down below as well as tissues. Washcloths, hand towels, and lots of additional space. space. This is your hair dryer, so this is gonna take some getting used to. Yes, looks like the ones that are on the cruise. Yeah, well, it's <laughs> oh. So I unplugging it, it from the wall turns it on. We figured it out. Okay. And then there is hand soap here by the sink as well, and some extra glasses, which is nice that have in the sink to area. have in the sink area. And then behind me is kind of the closet quote-unquote area there is a pack and play up above a little bit of hanging space an in-room safe as well as an iron and ironing board and then some more space down below probably for like Luggage, bag storage yeah. but yeah decent decent size decent amount of space and then into the bathroom we go which looks like the seal on something's trying to pop off yeah the bottom of the kind of half shower wall not really attached. Yeah. Is that the entire barrier? That's the entire barrier too, which that is... I'm gonna get this place soaked. That is a change for us. We are not used to that sort of barrier for the shower. I do want to point out that it does come with 
um, shower gel affixed to the wall, and then some shampoo and conditioner with some fun Mickey head toppers that are specific to the resort too, which is fun. Oh wow, fun. look how short that is. We'll have to adjust that. And your towels are behind you. Which so also seems like I'm gonna just get that wet. Hopefully you don't get that wet while you're showering. Then there's a little seat in case you get tired. Or if you want a friend in the bathroom. Also true. And a small little trash, trash can. can. And then behind the door is the toilet area. Gosh. Oh no. We're fine. I just almost took out the shower. So this swings. I don't know what it's supposed to though. I don't think it's supposed to. So not the greatest bathroom. No. Not the greatest room. I feel like it's kind of a really strange amalgamation of, because we're used to Disney World. Yes. So this feels like a mix of actually like value, moderate, and deluxe. Because I feel like the bed is giving deluxe, and the vanity area is giving deluxe. And the lobby gives deluxe. Right. The resort itself is The giving, reception area. It's giving stuff. deluxe. But this... Like, this gives value. The, the, the bathroom gives value for sure. Well, I feel like the bathroom is value, except I think when we stayed at the All-Stars recently, they've had better amenities than the shower. True. But this, to me, is... This is a moderate. This yeah. is Port Orleans. This is Coronado Springs. The way you have the like little area in your bathroom area to hang up your... Basically, you don't have a real closet. And you have the curtain. That's True. the moderates. So, and it's also just... It, I mean, it's like Yacht Club. So I think that's part of what's throwing me into the deluxe. Right. But it's really interesting. Had no idea. And I mean, people have... We should have known probably that there would be no AC, but when we booked this resort, we thought that we were getting it. Because this is a four star per Disneyland Paris booking website, mm -hmm. and the only five star is this Disneyland Hotel, and the one that's kind of in between, it's like four star plus, is the Art. Hotel New York yeah. Art of Marvel. So we assumed being a four star that it would have all the amenities we would want. And I know that... We're going to survive. Yeah, we're going to be fine. And I know that in Europe, it's not common to have air conditioning. So it's something that we are just not used to. Yeah, we're getting the immersive experience. I think the other thing is that this resort could use a refresh. Definitely. I think Disneyland Hotel got all the love recently after the New York Hotel, Art of Marvel, was built and is so lovely. So I, th I think it's... It's Newport Bay's time. Yeah. I think it, and it, I think it is time. Yeah, for sure. But, I mean, we're going to sleep here. We're going to get ready here. We'll let you know how it is. Yeah. So that will conclude our room tour. Okay, so had a very, very long travel day slash day one. Well, I mean, how many hours has it been? We... We woke up at five ish Eastern time. Eastern time, like ish, right? What? I think. On the day we left? Yes. We woke up, well, I woke up at like, I guess, 4 a.m. Eastern time ish because I was having some stomach trouble. So it was like, I was just awake, man. On, fr on Friday, on Friday, May seventeenth. So we yeah. have when we were here. We're here, middle of May. Um, so Friday, May seventeenth, three a.m., four a.m. Eastern time, waking up, and now it is currently. And we had also stayed up late the night before to try to book something for something we have coming up. So like, yes, a little Easter egg. Indeed, y'all can figure that out. But it's now. What time is it even? 8 17 p.m. So, like 2 p.m. ish, 2 15, 2 17 p.m. Eastern time, Eastern time. Uh, the next day. And the only sleep that we've gotten is maybe an hour each on the plane. 
so I have no idea how much sleep we actually got yeah we are we are running on fumes um, but we're still in pretty darn good shape and spirits <laughs> we are we are making it work for like we checked the forecast it was supposed to be like 60s and I was like you know what we're gonna wear our cute little matching sweatshirts and we're gonna be cozy, we're gonna be comfy, we're gonna be cute. And then it's like 75 degrees Fahrenheit. At least feels like to us. And we're dying. Because the humidity here is a lot different than the humidity, humidity that we are used to. Yeah. So. But I mean like, the flight was fine. We did what we needed to do. Mm -hmm. And then we got off the plane and then you changed the train tickets because we were supposed to sit at the hot airport for like to yeah over two hours basically i pre-booked the train ticket to give us plenty of time to get through customs and whatnot. which really wasn't as terrible as we expected no we were off the plane and with our bags and everything like at the train station within like an hour and a half so and we stood in line for a bit we did so but then the tr it was like we were running to get the train and then well, surprise so I would, it I would was able to change it Right. But the one I could change it to was leaving in like six minutes. Yeah. So changed it, went down to get the train, and then last minute it was changed from the one track to the up to another track. And Which was just across the way. Right. But we were just trying to figure things out, and you took French in school, I took Spanish in school, and a lovely French worker said, Mickey Mouse? You go to Mickey Mouse? Yes, this train will take you to Mickey Mouse. And we said, okay, merci. And, but the train at that point was so full that we had to stand up. There wasn't room for our suitcases. Yeah. And I got whacked by a suitcase that kind of fell out of its holder because we were trying to stand by the suitcases. But then we were just like, huh. and finally, we got kind of lost walking from the train station to Newport Bay Club. Because there's, there's some construction going yeah. on. So there's walls up and signage is not super Dis clear. Disney Village is kind of cray right now. It is. There's a ton of construction happening. Which I think it could also use some love. Yes, for sure. Because, like, compared to what we have in the U.S., it's just not there. Yeah. I don't know that it needs to be there, but in its current form, it's not at that level. But, I mean, we'll still hit some stuff up and look around it and explore what's currently there. Mm -hmm. But just kind of got lost and it was hot and we were in our plain clothes and just tired and stinky and, you know, sweaty. Yeah. But got in way early, so of course the room wasn't ready got to change clothes in a bathroom with no AC. Should have known. Should have been the like, hmm, maybe we won't have AC. Yeah. If the public bathrooms at the hotel don't have it. But you know, we just, <laughs> and went to Disneyland Paris. Yeah. So, well, you would have already, yeah, Dis park. Disneyland Park. Disneyland Park. You would have already seen all of that footage, but what was your favorite ride of the day? I really enjoyed Pirates, and I, I have two. It's Pirates and Phantom Manor. Mine would be ex it's exactly the same. I think it's so cool seeing the difference from Disney World versus Disneyland Paris for the same ride. Because the theming is... Well, if, Haunted Mansion versus Phantom Manor is completely different. I don't... I I want to ride Phantom Manor again. Yes. The party ahead of us, I think, was trying to record. So basically had, like, a flashlight going almost the entire ride. Which was a lot and really distracting. But I feel like I don't have a firm grasp on the story of Phantom Manor. Mm -hmm. Because there's a phantom and he laughs a lot. And there's a bride who's sad. And we went underground. Yeah, that part was crazy. But at this point, that's kind of... I And I'm also very tired. But that's my understanding of the story of the ride. Yes, I <laughs> know. It's, there's, a, there's a bride, there was a couple, something happened. We know it has something to do with Big Thunder Mountain. Right. As far as the storyline goes here. So 
We'll, we'll have to look into that and we'll figure it out and report back. We'll get it done. Um, and then Pirates was a lot of similar scenes with some tweaks. I thought Pirates was grander. It was than the Disney World Pirates. There was one scene the we've pillaged everything when the stuff's on fire and mm -hmm. the guy has like ten hats on his head. That it just was this huge wide. It was very shot, wide. and yes. I, it was one of those moments when you're like. This is like a movie set. Disney felt, World, you're riding through it, so it's just like a facade. You're yeah. going past here. It's just this huge... It felt like the great movie ride. Yeah. That's a good way to put it. It was just one of those moments on the ride when I was like, wow, this is cool. Yeah. They also had several animatronics that we don't have mm -hmm. in Orlando, which was like Barbosa. Yeah. I think we caught him kind of between things. Yeah. Because he just laughed and then kind of froze and then laughed again. Yeah. And then they also had Will. Will Turner doing a sword fight with somebody. Right. I don't know who it was. In the part where it's like the husband and wife are chasing each other on the little turntable. I was after Jack pops out the barrel. Right. The, I have the map, or he doesn't know I have it. Mm -hmm. But I even thought the ending scene with Jack and all the treasure. That was grander. That was, like, beautiful. It was yes. one of those moments when you're like, wow, these Imagineers just knock this out of the park yeah like holy cow it also i liked the the boarding loading area too being kind of like similar to the mexico pavilion where you're inside but it feels like you're outside with all the trees and then immediately when you start you pass by the captain jack's restaurant so you're just you're in it you're in it and it feels so real and it was really cool so really enjoyed we, that one. Well. I think we want to ride both of those again. Yes. The group we were with on uh, Pirates was having a grand time. Yes. So we also had a grand time, but now I think knowing what to expect, we'll be able to like pay more attention to all the little details and just see all the little things that we've missed. Yeah. And then from Disneyland Park. Well, we wrote a couple other, we, we did, did a couple other things. We did the Aladdin walkthrough, which was basically like the windows on Main Street that moved. So I don't think we're going to want to do that one again. No. Our first ride was actually Small World, yeah. which was very cool. I loved the moose in Canada. I thought it was very funny. And then the, the U.S., of course, was like Hollywood and football. Yeah. But... That one was very fun. I don't know that we're going to... If we do it again, great. If not, glad we did it. It was cool. Mm -hmm. We were happy. And then we did the Snow White ride, which was hilarious. And if anybody knows anything about Disneyland Paris, the last scene is like Snow White and the Prince. And I'm tired, but it looked to me like they used the same mold for Gene Kelly's face from the Singing in the Rain animatronic from the great movie ride and just put it on the prince's face. Yeah. His, like they just used Gene Kelly's face and put it in a wig. The face did not match Snow White or the dwarves or any other animatronic well, the, in that whole ride. The dwarves were not animatronic in the last scene. That's true, they didn't. They were just like statues. and But Snow White just was like blinking and nodding. And then it looked like Gene Kelly was just chilling with her. Yeah. And it didn't look anything like the illustrations of him anywhere else on the ride. Yeah. But I also really like the spooky trees that went mm -hmm. towards you. Yeah. And that was the last attraction that we did before heading back to the hotel via dinner at Hotel New York. Yes. So we ate at Downtown Restaurant, which is the whole resort is Marvel themed. So kind of themed towards Marvel a bit um, as far as the desserts go, but in general it's themed to New York and the food is divided into three sections. So there's the American food, so it's like burgers and uh, chicken wings mm -hmm. um, and like potatoes, green beans. green beans, and then there's the little Italy section, so pizzas, pastas, etc. And then there's the Chinatown section, or a lot of, a lot of different Asian cuisines. Um, so there was some noodles, some rice, some um, orange duck, or not orange duck, orange pork, um, dim sum, so, yeah. Overall, food was This was, was supposed to be the quote-unquote best buffet at Disneyland Paris, from what we had heard. From what, yes, from what we heard. So, we were, but we'd also heard that the food at Disneyland Paris is not at the same level as Disney World. 
Yes. So we wouldn't. We went in with expectations not like terribly high. <laughs> we knew there would be stuff that we could eat. We knew after this long day that we needed a good meal, and we were adequately fed for sure. Yeah. I don't know that there was. I thought some of the desserts were exceptional. I don't know that any of the food that we had, and I, we didn't eat everything. No. But I don't know that any of the food we had was like five star food. Yeah. A couple a couple standouts for me food wise, the citrus pork from the, from the Asian cuisine was very good. I thought um, kind of like an orange chicken sauce, but just with with some pork, and then the um, pasta with the truffle cream yeah, sauce. Yeah, there was a truffle pasta, which was very reminiscent of the black truffle pasta per sets on the Disney Cruise Line. Not quite that good. Disney Cruise Line's pasta is a bit thinner. This was a bit thick for pasta. Um, the flavor of the sauce was fairly similar, though. Yeah. So if you have somebody who's a big fan of that, they could get a little fix there. Yes. And I mean, we were definitely fed. Yeah. So I don't know that we would, like, rush back. But if we no. were hungry, we would go. We did get upcharged the water. Well, so the meal is 45 euros a person, mm -hmm. and that includes one drink or water. Um, we are used to, in the U.S., free refills, which that is not a thing here. Um, and we went in knowing that. Um, so she asked us if we wanted to add some water to that. Well, she basically said, will one drink be enough? Do you want some water, too? And we said, okay, and still are sparkling. So we said still, and then $6 added to the bill, which, or not $6, 6 euro added to the bill, which isn't the mm -hmm. end of the world. It was a large it was a liter of thing water. of water. So, so it was okay, but it was just like, okay. And then at the end of the meal, ooh, our, and our server was very, very nice. Do you want any hot drinks? Does, do you want anything else? And it's like, no. Right. No, we're good. Um, as far as the desserts go, though, standouts for me, I really liked the white chocolate pistachio tart. Um, the strawberry tiramisu was randomly very good. Not coffee-y at all. No. It Just was tasteless basically and fresh a, strawberry yeah, It was like a strawberry shortcake with yeah. a little extra of the cream, cream on top. Um, the macarons were very good. The chocolate one especially was very good. I like chocolate, so... Um, the fun kind of Avengers themed ones, Thor's Hammer, very rich chocolate mousse. Um, if you like chocolate, would definitely get that. I will say the Groot pot, although it was so cute, I think that was way too rich. That was even more rich than the hammer. I didn't try that one. And the hammer had like a chocolate center, like a richer chocolate center to it. As yeah, well. I accidentally got a little bit of that part and I was like... <sighs> yeah. And but the, I'm not into chocolate and then one that surprised me was it was like a chocolate bonbon with a fruit ball on top didn't know what to expect did and cut into it and it just kind of like exploded so the a puree of sorts yeah the ball was filled with like raspberry puree and it was just a thin chocolate ball so as soon as you cut into it, it just kind of oozed everywhere which was really good but yeah my top two were the strawberry tiramisu and a lime cheesecake my bottom, because I am a carrot cake girl, was the carrot cake. Because although it was spiced very well, it was equally dry as it was spicy. Yes. So. But now we are back in our room, tired. Yeah. So it is time to call it a night. Tomorrow we're heading to Disney Studios Park for the we day. we got to get settled in a little yes. bit. Because we're going to be here a few days. Very true. So we will call this video a day so with that being said thank you so much for watching and we will see you next time see you real soon